All right, so we're checking out knowledge check 14.5.4. Again, we're going to use complete journey for the data sets and we'll use the dplyr package to do some joining and then also some um, summary statistics. All right, so number one question is using the products and transaction sample data, how many products have and have not sold? So in other words, of all the products we have in our inventory um, and all the products we have in our inventory, um, it can be seen under products. So of all these products, how many have been involved in a transaction? And then how many have not been involved in a transaction? So really what we wanna do is we wanna take our products table and we want to do some filtering joins to identify those that exist in the transaction sample and then those that do not exist. All right, so to go ahead and take a look at products here and identify all the product IDs uh, that exist in the transaction table, we can use semi-join. Now semi-join is not gonna actually join the data from transactions over to products. What it's gonna do is it's gonna look, does the product ID exist in both of these? And if so, retain, retain those observations. All right, so what we wanna do here is semi-join with transaction sample and we wanna do it by the product ID, All right? So if we were to look, let's go back and look at our full products table. We see over here, we have 92,331 observations. But when we filter for those that exist in the transaction sample, we have 20,897, All right? So we can say that of all the products in our inventory, a little over 20,000 of them have been involved in a transaction. Well, so now the question is how many have not been involved? Well, we could do the exact inverse of what we just did. And we can use what's called an anti-join to join that with transaction sample by product ID. And what this will do is it's gonna look at the product ID that exists in our products data and identify those that are not in transaction sample, which means they have not been involved in transaction. And it's going to filter our products table for just those, right? And so now we see we have 71,434. Now, rather than looking at the number up here, we can always just go ahead and we could use tally. And tally is just going to go ahead and tally up the number of observations that exist. So we can see 71,434 is the exact number that um, number of products that have not been involved in a transaction. All right, number two, using the demographics and transaction sample data, identify which income level buys the most quantity of goods. All right, so what we can do here is we want to go ahead and take demographics. And in this case, let's go ahead, we're gonna do an inner join. And what that means is we're gonna retain all of the um, households in de demographics um, that have made a purchase and that exists in our transactions sample. So when we join this, we're gonna join by household ID. And so now we have our data set where we have taken all our household demographic information and then we've aligned that to uh, basically all of our transaction information. And it says identify which income level buys the most quantity of goods. Okay, so what we wanna do is actually group by the income level, which is just the income variable, which we see right here. And then what we want to do is compute the total quantity of goods, right? So I just want to go ahead and summarize and I'm going to call this total quantity equals the sum of quantity. And now we have the total quantity for each income level. And if we wanna find which which ones uh, in order purchase most to least, we can go ahead and just do an arrange, descend by total quantity. 
And now we see that 50 to $74,000 income uh, level is the one that generates the most quantity of goods, followed by 35 to 49,000.